Okay, in this video I'm going to put the blocks on ready to mount the motherboard in the case. You see here I've got my GPU which is my 980 Ti. It's currently got a hybrid cooler and I'm going to remove this hybrid cooler and put on the GPU block. I didn't buy a backplate for this because it already has one. It does have this ugly sticker on. Hopefully I can flip the backplate and turn it around. I don't know whether that will work, but I will try it. I would remove this sticker, but it says warranty void if removed. Having said that, it's probably void anyway by putting a GPU block. So I'm going to do the GPU first. So the first thing I'm going to do is this GPU, which is my 980 Ti hybrid. I'm going to remove the hybrid cooler. It works very well, actually, the hybrid cooler. I'm going to remove that and put on the water block. And then I'm going to do the same for the motherboard. So I'm going to unbox the CPU, which I haven't done yet and mount the CPU into the motherboard with the CPU block, which I finally have. One thing I will note about the CPU block is I flipped it round. It goes that way round on the motherboard. Originally, this had the in port at the top and the out port at the bottom, which makes sense from a gravitational point of view, but the pump will be able to flow uphill. I've just flipped the block around in the case. So I unscrewed the, the bottom of the block and flipped it so that the input is at the bottom and the output is at the top because that just makes more sense for my loop. So all I've done is flip the block around to change the orientation. I'll put that on a second. I'll do this CPU after I've done the GPU. Okay, my first task is going to be the GPU block. I'm going to unscrew the back plate to start with. So I'm going to remove these screws for the back plate. Okay, and now I will remove these corner screws. So you can see that the heatsink is off. If I unplug our fan here. That, that's the heatsink off. Now I need to remove the plate that's on there and the heatsink that goes over. That is off. And now I'm going to clean this. I won't record. I'm just going to wipe the existing paste off. Okay, you can probably see how shiny that is. I've shined that up nicely. That's useful. That means all the paste. I've shined that up, and that means all the paste is off. There's a little bit of paste remaining uh, inside the socket. That doesn't matter. It's not conductive. It was like that when I opened it up. I'm going to use the X method to put some paste on here and then fit the block. But before I do that, I need to do the uh, hard compound for these blocks here. Okay, so we're ready to do the thermal pads. EK recommends putting a drop of thermal paste onto each of the VRAMs before putting the pads on. And we only want a very small drop. It's actually going to be far too much. So I'm going to remove what I've just done, and in fact, I'm going to use the tissue here to spread it. I'm going to put these thermal pads on each of the VRAMs. Okay, I'm going to use Arctic Silver 5 instead of the generic EK TIM that came with the GPU block. Now, with the newer EK blocks, they supply Thermal Grizzly, which is better, but I'm saving this for the Threadripper CPU, which is the block that it came with. I don't know what the generic EK TIM is, so I'm going to use the tried and tested uh, Arctic Silver 5, and this is not conductive, so it doesn't matter if it gets into these metal uh, contacts. And in fact, it won't make any difference at all if it does. 
and it can't even help. I'm going to use the X method of doing the thermal paste. The more the merrier. I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube. J2 Sense did a good test where he showed that too much actually doesn't matter at all. Too little, however, does. So we want to make sure, and I've not done that very well. You could tell I wouldn't be very good at piping cakes. Uh, doing icing, and I'll put a bit more in there. Just go across. And I've put way too much paste on here now, but as I said, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna try and spread it out slightly. Done the X method, and now it's time to put the block on. Put the lid back on the Arctic Silver, first of all. Everyone's gonna tell me there's too much paste on there, but as I said, look at Jay's video. He tested this, it doesn't actually matter. He put a ridiculous amount on. Oh, it's just a slight mark, if you can see here, on my block. So again, I'm going to just shine up the block. I've got a microfiber cloth here. I'm shining this up to ensure there's no imperfections. What you don't want is any kind of dirt or anything that will uh, potentially burn or damage or, or potentially burn or cause an imperfection in the heat transfer. It will stop the heat transferring as efficiently, which is also incidentally why you want it shiny because it works better. So the block you can see goes on this way and I'm going to place it down where it goes, line it up, press it down. Okay, so with that in place, we can turn it around, and this is where it gets tricky, and what I like to do, in cases like this, is hang the GPU over the worktop, because then I can have it flat. If you don't do that, or have something to rest it on, the card will prop up, and the back plate, uh, and the GPU block will come away from the GPU. So, what I'm doing now is putting back on the back plate, and actually it's a bit dusty from where it was in use previously, so I'm going to dust it off. Okay, one problem I've had is that the back plate that came with the card that I had hoped to use didn't work. So I've ordered the official EK back plate because it'll look a lot nicer than not having a back plate on there. Uh, so I'm gonna wait. I've, I've put the rest of the screws, I've put some of the screws in, just hold it together, and I'm gonna put some more in but I'm going to wait until I get the back plate. So that's delayed me by another day, unfortunately. I'll put the rest of the screws in and then start on the uh, CPU block. Okay, I've unboxed the CPU. I'm now going to install it. And I've seen a few videos on how to do this. I need to unscrew these screws with the supplied thing. And there is an order for this. Open three, two, one. And so three, first of all. Theory, it should just pop up from what I've seen. Oh, maybe I haven't undone it enough. Okay, perhaps I didn't open the screws. Ah, there we go, I didn't do three enough. So, there we go, that's open. I want to take out this, slide out the external cap. Okay. Well, that is very tight in there. Ah, there we go, so that slides up, that comes out, slides in, like that, looks okay, and now we'll push that down. Well, it looks good. Ah, oh, there we go, you just have to clip those into place. Right, I see. And then we push that down and screw them up. So close is one, two, three, so one is the top. Okay, 
I'm not convinced that's actually the only purchase, so this may not be down quite correctly. That's down, that's down. Yeah, you see that pops in and out. I'm not convinced by this. Well, that definitely won't go any further down that run. So it looks like it should work. Maybe that's just moved it a mil. Ah, there we go. So that's one. So that's that done. Now we need to install the back uh, the, the thing. So now I'm going to put this on. I don't need that because I've got the block. I'd have thought there would have been a back plate for it, but maybe it just goes into the, the motherboard. So again, I'm shining this up to make sure that it's clean. I'm going to use my uh, thermal grizzly paste and I'm going to put lots of this on here because it's a huge, or I would do, if I could open the thing. Okay, I'm going to use my thermal grizzly paste that came with the CPU block and I'm going to use the X method with a few extra dots because there's so much area on this chip. Almost a worryingly large area. Okay, so we'll do the cell paste is very thick. It's hard to even get out. I'm just going to do a run down the middle because you can see it is blotchy where it's not actually coming out very easily. That's actually, I think, all of it. I think that's all the paste. So there's not much paste in there. Okay, so I've done the X method with a few extra dots. I should now put the CPU block on. Hopefully, I don't need any more paste. So that's lined up to there. This is the easiest CPU block installation I've ever done, the easiest cooler installation I've ever done, because you don't have to get around the back of it, you can do it all from the front. It's very good. That's on. That is the CPU block installed. CPU installed, CPU block installed. I'm now going to mount this in the case on the motherboard tray so that I can measure the tubes for uh, the radiator because I want one the radiator coming from the top into the port here. And we're actually going to come in to the inputs at the bottom of the cell. Let's flip this around. The, uh, the tubes can come out the case, up into the import, at the output, and then up to the top. I've mounted the motherboard, I'm not keeping it, I need to take it out to put the shroud back in the bottom so there's nothing I can do, I can't leave it in at the moment. Um, I've mounted it so that I can measure the tube that's going to come from here 
to here. So we need a tube coming somehow here in order to go back down. And what I might try and do is move this one. So this needs to then come to the GPU. So I'm going to put the GPU in as well so that we can see. I'm going to put the GPU in as well so that I can see where all of my tubes need to go and do all of my bending. This might be slightly tricky. I might wish I had another angle bracket here because I need to get something down and past this fan. I'm not sure there's anything easy I can do with that. I don't think I can use a piece of straight tubing because of this block. So this is the kind of thing I wish I'd bought another one of these fittings for. So I need to have a fitting probably coming out here to come down and then round, which is rather annoying. So with the motherboard installed, I've only got a couple of screws in to hold it in place. I'm just doing a tube from the top. You can see I've put a 90 degree bend in, probably the easiest bend you can make, and measuring it to size to fit in here. If we take a look back at how it's going to look, the tube comes straight out the radiator into a nine, well, two 90 degree fittings, and then comes down, and it happens that these two are close enough of the right height it looks like a straight line. They're about a millimetre out, if, if not less. So I can actually have a really nice small tube coming straight down, bending into here and looking really good. And then I'm going to do something with the tube from here that will go into the GPU, which is sat here. I've just taken that out to make fitting this tube easier. So I will fit this, show you how it looks, and then move on to the next one. Okay, I've now put the shroud back on, as you can see. Uh, put the shroud back on, and also done the tubes for the CPU block. So this one's going here. I've also got another that goes here to the GPU, and I've got one that goes from the GPU down to the shroud. The reason I stopped to take a video at this point is because I realised that I can't put the water cooling set up and till the PSU's in and that's annoying I was hoping to leave the PSU till the very last and run the loop without the PSU uh, in here but because the motherboard connections are here for the PSU and obviously the big 24 pin up here I need to attach the PSU or at least the cables to here which is annoying because it means taking my existing PC apart because I'm taking the PSU out of it. But I'll have to do that. So I need to get the cables and plug them into here before I can do the uh, actually build the water cooling setup. But as you can see, I'm pretty much ready. Uh, I'm going to put the M2 slots in. That's why I haven't got the graphics card in yet because I need to put an M2 in here. I've got a 512 960 Evo for one of them and a 1 gig Crucial MX300. It's the cheapest SSD I could get, sorry, one terabyte uh, cheapest one I could get, but that's just an SSD for files and documents and maybe a few games, but it's still gonna be faster than a normal hard drive. So I've got a one terabyte for one of these and a 512 Evo for my operating system. So I'm gonna build that in now. I won't record putting the M2 slots in, it's not very really interesting, but I do need to put the P2P SU in which is my next task to do that. But I'm pretty much ready. You can see that the PC itself is looking quite good. I did a test loop uh, in the last video. I have attached these, so I will make sure these are very tight and do a leak test before actually powering up the board. Well, that's it for now. I will come back to you once I've attached everything else. So who'd have thought I'd have so many problems with a very simple piece of technology, a uh, graphics card backplate. You can see that the backplate here is missing a screw and it actually and the backplate came with too few screws so I need two more of these unusual uh, Allen key screws that are not standardized at all. I've managed to order some more but I need to wait for those to arrive. So I've just got two screw holes well at the moment I've got a placeholder screw in there that happens to fit um, and when they arrive, I will replace them. But I'm going to get on with the build because I've, I can't wait for more stuff to arrive. I keep seeming to have to wait for things to arrive. So I need to crack on with the build. I'm just going to leave that screw empty and that one there replaced with a uh, non, well, with the wrong screw. So I can crack on. Again, okay, I was just installing the SSD and I realised I should mention something I mentioned in one of the first videos I did. By getting the Gigabyte Aorus motherboard, which comes with these M2 covers, 
I was able to save a bit of money by going for this crucial uh, piece, of, uh, crucial M2. If I hadn't got the covers for the M2 slots, I would have either needed to buy some anyway, or avoid ugly looking blue PCBs like this. So the crucial uh, M2 drive there is really ugly. It's got a very horrible sticker on it. It's got a blue PCB, which completely goes against what I'm trying to do here with the aesthetic. And I just wouldn't really be able to use it. I'd have to go for more expensive SSDs. This was remarkably cheap for one terabyte. I think it was less than 150 pounds, a lot less than 150 pounds, maybe 120 or something like that. It was remarkably cheap. And I can just cover the ugliness of it with the slot, which gives me the best of both worlds. It means I can use the ugly but cheap uh, high storage PCB there. The 960 Evo looked nice, which is actually, you might be able to just see it snug hidden under the other slot. But the reason I got this board rather than the ASRock, which I was originally gonna go for, was basically these M2 covers because it just gives me more flexibility on the M2 drives. And I'm going completely M2. As I said, I've got a one terabyte here and a 512 here. Everything else is network attached storage, which I have connected to my router in the other room. And that's more than enough I need in a single PC. Anything else, videos, music is all on my NAS. So it's really just for games and anything I need on the PC. I've installed it and you can see there that the ugly blue PCB is pretty much hidden. If you look at it right from above, you can just see it, but that's fine. We're not going to see it from that angle and it's going to be hidden away behind that cover. One thing on aesthetics I will note is these ugly red capacitors or whatever they are down there. Gigabyte wants a very hard work to make this RGB board black and white, but why have they left four red caps on those capacitors or whatever the hell they are? I don't know, that's an odd choice and it almost actually put me off buying the board, but I thought considering everything else I would go for this, hopefully the RGB will outshine it and it won't be noticeable. Okay, I've done my tubing, you can see I've got the loop running from this radiator to the CPU block, the CPU block then goes to the GPU block, which then goes down behind the shroud, down to the pump. And this goes up into the top radiator and then comes back down. I'm not too happy with this, it's a bit of a, I'm not too happy with this, it's a bit of a strange angle, but it's the best I can do, unfortunately. Uh, with what I've got, I'd need to get some different fittings to solve that, and I don't think I can. So that's it, I'm now going to fill it. There's no PSU in there at the moment. I'm going to fill it without a PSU because the PSU can slot in afterwards so I'll do everything and power it on. Test the loop before putting any power onto the motherboard. So I'm gonna fill this now and test it. Okay, here's an update. I've got everything connected now. So the fans are in, motherboard's in. Fans are in, the motherboard's in, the processor's in, everything's in and installed. I've got Windows installed. Okay, that's it. Everything is now done. The computer is complete. You can see that I've got the green running. I'll, well, I'll run through a few things I've changed. That could be a bit nicer lined up. You can see from the back, you can't see the rear I.O. You can just about see this top one. I might move the USB down a bit so it's not on show. But if you're stood over here, you can't see all the ugly I.O. Uh, cables, which is why, why I had the radiator on the rear. So I'm going to move this monitor quickly so you can see what I've got. So if you look down there, you can see the cables go down behind the desk in a managed way. I might drill a hole in the desk to put the cables through. It doesn't look too bad at the moment. They're all in one quite organised uh, string. There's a bit of mess there, but you can't really see it unless you come around this side of the screen. I might use a few cable ties to sort that out. But overall, it looks pretty damn good. So you can see there that, probably that's not very good for you. You can see there that while it's on, I've got the green lighting and it looks pretty damn impressive. I don't think the camera really does it justice. So I'll just give you a quick zoom in of everything running. You can see I've got my Trident Z memory up and running. There's a slight problem with one of the modules. One of the LEDs in this module is dead. But because I'm not going to send it back because sending it back will require taking the RAM out which will mean draining the loop and being without a computer for a few days which I can't do at this time of year unfortunately because uh, I need it for work. But you can see there that the entire thing is up and running. It looks pretty cool. I like the Gigabyte 
Urus RGB. One thing I don't like is those ugly red lights that are always on. I wish there was a way to turn those off because they've gone to so much trouble to make an, a complete RGB monochrome board and yet they've got a red RGB. I don't know what the logic of that was. If I was them, I would have used the same uh, RGB LEDs that they used everywhere else and had that change colour. I'd have used the same RGB LEDs they used everywhere else and had that change colour with the rest of the board. So that's a bit disappointing because there's always those red lights. And if you look at it from a distance, you can see those red lights. It's not too bad. It is a sort of semi-interesting detail with red amongst the green, but I'm not keen on it. I would have rather it was green. Uh, one thing I have changed since my last video is I did get an extra fitting for here. So you can see now that is a much better angle on this tube here. So this tube is pretty much straight now. It's, this tube is pretty much straight. It's a couple of degrees out, but it's almost nothing. And I've got a fan on the back as well. So with that there, I was also able to fit a rear fan. So these rear fans, only really for aesthetic, they're actually in push, push, pull. So there's a push fan, a push fan, and a pull fan. Again, only really for aesthetic reasons and nothing else. But that is it. Computer is done. I've been using it now for a couple of days. Everything's wor everything's working, no leaks, and the pump works great. Pumps up into the GPU, goes on the GPU, goes into the CPU block, up into that top radiator, down the pipe outside the case to the rear radiator, which then inside that fake fan goes back through the rear radiator and then out through, if you remember, through the thing at the bottom, you can see the green fluid in there, goes along the bottom of the case up into the front radiator. So I'm really proud of this build. I've got a really nice looking PC, uh, really nice looking Threadripper PC now. I'm really proud of what I've, what I've got here and I'm happy with how it looks. The RGB is actually very strong. You can see it from halfway across the room. If I go back, you can see that the RGB there is very strong, but that's good. So that's it. I'm going to leave this build log here. Uh, I'll just give you a few more shots of the finished build, but you can see that the build is done. I'm very happy with how it looks and I'll just leave you with a few shots of the final build.